Hi guys! Welcome to another episode of the Early Grown Garden by Along Me. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you something I've learned about taking care of air plants that I wish I'd known right from the start. For committing the same mistakes as a lot of air plants enthusiasts, me included, and having your precious air plants succumb to death, you must know that there are air plants that you should avoid soaking. Keep watching! Don't get me wrong, there are just some air plants that would only prefer to be misted or dumped rather than soaked while other air plants do great with 15 to 30 minute soaks once a week. Take note that there are telanchias, telanchias that belong to the category of seri plants. They have an abundance of trichomes. These air plants should often be dumped or misted. On the other hand, mesic air plants with the bright green leaves and less trichomes prefer to be soaked once a week. To learn more about Sarah and Mesic Airplanes, check out our OGG video using the link on the descriptions below or click on the cards here or here, somewhere. Moving on. This would be an awesome rule to follow, but there is an exception to it though. Airplanes with bulbous bases, whether they have bright green leaves or not, must not be sold for long periods of time either. Believe me, I learned this the heartbreaking way. Water can get trapped in their bulbous spaces and can cause them to rot. Sometimes it would even be too late when you find it out. Here's a short list of air plants that you should avoid soaking. Telangia serographica. These air plants should be dumped or sprayed rather than soaked. They are considered seric and come from dry regions. These air plants can withstand less water and more sun. I used to soak my first serographica. I followed the usual routine of shaking it after a soak and letting it dry upside down but still, it started rubbing from inside out. Now, I just dumped my serographicus in a bucket of water, making sure water doesn't get trapped in their leaves, then I let them dry upside down near a ventilator before putting them back on their homes. Talantia Tictoro These hair plants are the most abundantly fuzzy trichomes I've ever seen. Google them. You will never ever want to soak these air plants because they're not going to love it. They'll hate you. We already know that trichomes help air plants absorb moisture from the air, and these telangias have a lot of them. Telangia tictorum is native in arid regions of Ecuador and Peru, which means that these plants can thrive without much moisture. These air plants are very forgiving to those who often forget to water their plants. It is recommended to only mist your telangia tictorum every other week depending on how hot and dry your climate is. Bulbous air plants Air plants that belong to the bulbous group are Telangia capitimidaceae, Telangia bulbosa, Telangia provenosa, Telangia pseudobilea, Telangia potea, Telangia pseudobilea, Telangia bulbosa, and Telangia celeriana. In the wild, these air plants have a symbiotic cohabitation with ants. I'm not totally sure if there are more out there, but if your airplanes have an onion like shaped bulb as a base, then you should really take care of and watering them, especially when you're planning on soaking them. Their bulbs are hollow, which can easily trap water and cause the plant to rot from inside out. This happened to me a lot of times. As a confession, I killed a lot of put me to say before, and I'm not proud of it. Now, my bulbous air plants are happy, healthy, and blooming. I entirely stopped soaking them. I rarely even dunk them. I just spray them twice a week, and by spraying, I may not tell they are dripping wet. Just make sure to shake out excess water and making sure to let them dry within four hours near a ventilator. Well, at least that's what I do. Experience. Airplane to the wispy leaves. Two examples of these air plants are the Telangia foxiae persilis and Telangia andriana. They have thin, wispy leaves that can dry out concurrent between waterings. They should not be soaked because they would benefit more in frequent misting or quick dumps. Misting them regularly every two days would ensure that they are getting adequate water. Air plants in bloom. Never wet the flower. That's what I always have in mind every time I water my air plants in bloom. It would be okay to soak the bottom leaves of the plant 
Just make sure as to not get the flower wet. The flower rots if wet for a prolonged period. This could cause, yeah, this could also cause the rot to take over the leaves and kill the plant. Another awesome thing to remember, it is better to underwater slightly rather than overwater your air plants because rot is irreversible, whereas underwater air plants can still be revived. However, before you jump on your horses and just stick to misting your air plants, keep in mind that for most air plants, misting is not adequate to keep your air plants healthy and thriving. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching this video. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Like and please comment. I don't care. Why do you guys never comment? No, most of you guys don't comment. And I'll see you on the next one.